Okay. Share it. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jonathan. Okay, I shared the live. Please feel free to share the live if you've got any friends who would like to join us for meditation this morning. I'm realizing it's just a little bit dark in here. I didn't turn on the extra light, so... Um, that's okay. Nice on the eyes. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who are new here, my name is Deborah. I am one of the Creatrix Llamas at Llamascar.com. We're an online mindfulness community where we believe that everybody deserves a safe space to show up exactly as they are. Um, these classes are our Bhakti Bites classes. Bhakti means devotion. So devotion to what? Devotion to self-care, our little bite-sized sessions of self-care because a, hey Todd, good morning, because a lot of times when we're on this path, when we're doing this work, um, self-care is one of those things that's hard to get in, right? We're so busy, <laughs> so busy doing shadow work <laughs> and recognizing our triggers and handling the day-to-day -day life and trying to manage and balance all that stuff that we forget, our simple practices of day of, of um, self-care, sometimes even taking a shower or brushing our teeth or feeding ourselves well. Um, so I invite you every week to join me for these little sessions uh, uh, where we usually we will practice a tool and we will we will sit in meditation with that tool to fully experience the scope of the tool itself. So we have been working with mudras um, for a number of weeks now. I really love mudras because they're a very simple tool. The only thing you need is to remember how to get your fingers in that position. <laughs> um, and then you can use them in the moment, um, in meditation as well as in the moment, to help balance what's going on, to help soothe the situation, to help bring down anxiety, to help increase authenticity or play. You know, there's so many, so many types of mudras. Um, and mudras work by redirecting the energy channels in the body, right? So we have so much energy that's actually coming out of our hands um, or flowing in and out of our hands. And mudras work to redirect that energy. Sometimes it's just a little bit of a redirection, like last week's mudra was the Vayu mudra. And we just tucked in our pointer finger and that was it. And that was for balancing our the air element in the body, generating a sense of serenity within ourselves. So this week, <laughs> this week is a holiday week for many of us. Um, and it's a, it's one of those holidays that requires us to spend time with people we've known, oftentimes people we've known for a long time. And when we know people for a long time, um, sometimes our relationships find their pitfalls, right? Not every relationship is perfect. And the longer we know people, the more likely we are to find things we don't like about each other. Um, but I wanted to use this mudra because I was trying to think of what, what qualities do we want to cultivate this week, right? And I thought about authenticity, allowing yourself to be authentic in the moment, to be truly who you are with your family and friends, right? Yeah, that's great. Um, connection. Yeah, it's a really important to make the connections with people and to, you know, um, to feel connected to people. Um, well, how about harmony? Yeah, harmony is really important too. We want to keep harmony, um, especially when we get together and gather, maybe with people who we don't always agree with, right? Um, so there was, a, there was a bunch of these ideas. And finally, I came across this one. This one's called the Kurma Mudra, K-U-R-M-A, Kurma Mudra. And Kurma translates to turtle or tortoise. And this mudra, this mudra is specific to cultivating patience. And I thought above and above anything else, right? To create harmony, we need a level of patience. To cultivate serenity, inner serenity, we need a level of patience. To communicate appropriately and well 
and compassionately, we need a level of patience. So I felt like this mudra was a really good one to do for this week because out of patience blooms so many other of those things that we hope for ourselves and for our family and for our gatherings this week. So one thing this mudra teaches us is like the turtle, the turtle, the tortoise, who has one of the longest lifespans of any uh, land creature, right? I believe. Maybe land and sea? I don't know. <laughs> Tell me if there's somebody who lives longer than a tortoise. <laughs> um, but what does the tortoise do? The tortoise moves slowly. The tortoise breathes slowly, right? And when the tortoise needs to rest, the tortoise goes within and rests and slowly takes their time in everything they do, cultivating patience. So how do we do the Kurma Mudra? Take your left hand. This one has two different hand shapes, so it's extra fun, okay? Uh, so take your left hand and curl in the last three fingers. So your pinky, your ring, and your middle finger, leaving your pointer and your thumb extended palm up. And then with your right hand, you make the little I love you symbol, dropping just your middle and your ring finger, leaving your thumb, pointer, and pinky all extended. Now you've got to connect the two. The folded fingers go right on top of each other. And then you will put your pinky on the tip of your pointer, your pointer to the tip of your thumb, and your thumb to the base of your palm, right? And can you, there we go, the base of your palm right here. So you have a little structure here, your little turtle, and the inner space in which the turtle goes within, where the turtle goes within to cultivate this patience. So this is your mudra. You can go ahead and rest it in your lap now. If you would like to drop the mudra for a second and center before putting your hands back in the mudra, that is fine too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hold my mudra and we are going to breathe ourselves into the present moment. So go ahead and either rest it in your lap or you can hold it in front of one of your chakras. It's a little harder as you get a little higher. So just hold it wherever you feel comfortable, um, but usually centered to the body, not off to the side here. Okay. So go ahead and close your eyes when you are ready. Remember that if you are driving a car, operating heavy machinery, please do not close your eyes, but you are definitely invited to sit with us during the meditation and kind of catch this vibe. So if you are able, let's begin our practice with three big deep breaths to fully arrive. Inhale, pulling the breath in through the nose, through the lungs, and down into the belly. Sigh it out. Inhale once more, elongating the spine and lifting the heart. Sigh it out. One more time. Inhale to expand the rib cage in all directions, front, sides, and back. Let it go. Now for the rest, for the duration of this meditation, I invite you to simply sit with the breath. Breathe like a tortoise. Take your time slowly elongating the breath, following the inhale all the way to the top and the exhale all the way to the bottom. See if you can slow down the breath. See how far you can slow down the breath. Remember that the most important part about meditation is your intention and your attention. So our intention here is to simply slow down the breath. And we bring our attention back to that practice over and over and over again. If your mind monkeys are busy and reminding you of stuff you got to do tomorrow or stuff you forgot to do yesterday, 
Simply thank them with a nod or a smile for their service and return to your breath. If there's a sensation that pops up or a sound outside of meditation, simply bring your attention gently back to your breath. In this way, we retrain the body and the mind to sit quiet in meditation. Slowly inhaling, filling the lungs all the way to the top, and exhaling all the way out. Keeping the lips sealed, breathing only through the nose. Cultivating a sense of patience, changing the quality of time simply by changing the quality of our breath. space you have all the time in the world. Notice as you continue to breathe a sense of expansiveness growing within. An elongating of not just your breath, but your senses as well. Continuing to breathe slow and steady.
as the breath slows. Notice the way quality of time shifts as if the entire world, your inner world and outer world, slowly. Some spell has befallen the whole world around you. Everything slows down. There is all the time in the world to respond, to make choices on how to interact with life, how to be with life. the patience to truly be present with the moment without hurrying along to the next. In this place, we can experience gratitude the smallest things. encourage you to sit with this mudra as long as you would like. When you feel complete, I invite you to bring your hands together in prayer or simply lay one over the other over your heart in gratitude for today's practice, in gratitude for the breath that allowed, allows us to change our quality of time, our experience of time our inner and outer experience of reality and of ourselves and of each other. That simple breath anchoring us in the present moment, in our present experience. And offer a little gratitude to yourself for taking the time for self-care today. Thank you so much for joining me. And as you come out of meditation, please do so slowly, offering yourself some stretches and some wiggles before opening your eyes. Oh, thank you, Katie. Oh. Good morning, good morning, guys. Oh, Katie. Hey, Corey. Um, okay. You're welcome, Todd. Katie, the mudra is called the Kurma Mudra, K-U-R-M-A, and um, it translates to tortoise or turtle mudra. Um, and this one is a mudra for cultivating patience, cultivating, cultivating an inner, that inner expansive space that allows us to be fully present in the moment, patient in the moment, increasing our ability to respond and be authentic in the moment. Okay, so it is done like so. You curl in your last palm up, left palm up, curl in the last three fingers, leaving only your pointer and your thumb extended. And then with your right hand, drop the two middle, the middle and the ring finger, making the little I love you hand shape. And then you'll place the folded fingers together. Then connect your pinky to your pointer, your pointer to your thumb, your thumb to the base of your palm where your wrist and your palm meet. <laughs> your fiance does this mudra. <laughs> she cultivating <pa> patience. 
with you. <laughs> yeah, so now you guys know. If you see family members this week doing this in the background, you know, sitting over in a corner somewhere being like... <sighs> Or you could be that person sitting over in the corner somewhere being like, I cultivate patience with my loved ones. <laughs> That's okay. Again, you know, these, these mudras, they redirect the energy channels, but this is why we sit with them, right? So we get to practice them and really get in deep with them rather than being like, oh yeah, that thing I do during meditation, right? No, the mudra we do, and then we meditate with that mudra so we fully understand it. Um, so, nice, Katie. It, yeah, I find it extremely soothing. Um, and when you sit in meditation with it, I feel like it kind of, you know that, you see this inner space here where your fingers are all small compared to the shape of the space? It reminds me of the turtle shell and the way the turtle goes within and becomes smaller within its own little protective space to cultivate that sense of patience, to rest when it needs to rest, to take a break when it needs to take the break, right? And I find holding this in meditation that I feel that sense in there. It's as if I become a little bit smaller and my space becomes a little bit bigger. Diana, you can feel that finger, if your finger's vibrating too. Yeah, these are really, it's, when you start to tap into your energy channels and really like intentionally pay attention to them, um, the experience can be really visceral, right? We can feel it in our, in our skin. We can feel it in our body. Oftentimes I can feel it in my teeth, um, or you can see it behind your eyes. When you really start to sit with the redirection of your energy body, the intentional redirection of your energy body, um, it becomes a really visceral experience. So congratulations. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. It means you're tapping into and you're increasing your awareness of your energy body and uh, doing that allows you to then affect and adjust and heal and balance your energy body. So it's a huge thing. Nice, Katie. Warm, rushing up your arms. Ooh, Jonathan, you did you did the opposite hands. You did it the other way. So I'm I'm like, feel free, guys, to experiment with these mudras, right? Um, welcome. Oh, thank you, Nikki. Nikki with the llamas. You spoil me, my friend. Um, welcome, Diana. I'm glad that you are here um, again. Uh, if you missed the beginning, these are our bhakti bites set. Bhakti Bites Sessions. My name is Deborah. I am one of the Creatrix Llamas at Lamascar.com. We're an online mindfulness community where we do this and much more. Um, and it's it's a space not just for like traditional like yoga and meditation and whatnot. We really cultivate a space where we practice and learn together mindfulness in everyday life. Sorry, friend, I don't go live with people I don't know, but you can send me a message and chat about doing so another time. Um, it's really about cultivating mindfulness in every aspect of life. It's not, it's, we don't, we're not, you know, going towards some religious something or other. We're not going towards one and only one school of thought because there is wisdom in so many different teachings all around the world. If we pull them all together and start to look at them all together, especially with the eyes of community, we actually can distill some really valuable information and some really valuable connections with each other, right? When we learn and we grow together and we share what we know. So that's what we do over at Lamascar.com. Um, you can join right at Lamascar.com. If you want to work directly with me, you can go to my website at movewithchange.com. Both of those uh, web addresses are in the bio. Um, oh, also, I forgot. Um, oh, that's what I was saying. So I encourage you to play with these mudras. Right. Like there's there are differences in some of the mudras. Remember a couple weeks ago we were talking about the difference between um, this hand shape and this hand shape. Right. There's like little things that we can change and it changes the direction of the energy. Um, so if you're feeling adventurous um, and you're not pregnant um, or you don't have high blood pressure and stuff like 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 a couple things like that, um, then feel free. Feel free to play with mudras. Um, if you do have health issues or you're pregnant um, because the physiology of the body changes when you're pregnant, there are some mudras that are contraindicated that are not recommended when you're pregnant. But otherwise, play with them. Play 
rhythm, see how it fits. You know, there's a, some mudras that are traditionally done with only the right hand. Um, and I have done them with the left hand to experience just what that other side of it is. Um, because one of the things that we are collectively doing now, right, is finding that balance between the masculine and the feminine, the divine masculine and feminine, between the yin and the yang, right? Um, and so when we offer ourselves the opportunity to sit with these practices, we cultivate that sense of mindfulness, but not just mindfulness. We increase our awareness in the present moment, right? The practice of meditation. Um, Bian Harris, what rec mudras are not recommended if you have high blood pressure? There's actually a good, a good list of them. So if you've got, if you're trying out mudras, just check like, I don't know in my head the list of ones that are contraindicated specifically for that. Just like I don't have the ones that are contraindicated specifically for pregnancy all in my head. I do know a couple of them. Um, but just check if you're doing mudras and it'll it'll tell you when you're researching. I have a really great resource that I love. They're mudra call, cards. They're called mudras of yoga. Um, they're a really good reference for mudras that I'm not familiar with. Um, yeah. But... Just be mindful if you know you have high blood pressure or you are pregnant that those are the probably two biggest contraindicators for some of the pranayama work, some of the breath work, as well as some mudra work. Um, yeah, there are ones to lower blood pressure too, so. <laughs> Diana, you fall asleep when you're meditating? I, yeah, my friend, I've done the same thing. And it's actually why I choose to meditate sitting up right now. Um, I was recently um, initiated into a specific lineage of meditation. And in this lineage, they say, feel free to get cozy, like lean back against a chair if you want to, you know, just be cozy in your meditation. Don't worry about sitting upright. You don't need to do that. And I was like, yeah, thank you. And, <laughs> and if I do this, my shoulders hurt, my back hurts, my shoulder, you know, my neck starts to get cramped, um, sitting in meditation slouched over like that. And I typically tend to slouch into it and fall asleep or doze off. But I find in meditation like this, the thing that keeps me from dozing off is that, oh, I'm upright, right? I'm, up, I'm upright <laughs> and I can't just nod off. Um, so yeah. But it is also really nice to do meditation as a collective, as a group. Um, you know, one of my favorite quotes that um, I've been saying for a while now, I love one of my favorite philosophers um, and um, wise people, I guess, is, is Thich Nhat Hanh, was Thich Nhat Hanh. Um, and he made a comment, made a statement some years ago that the coming of the next Buddha or the enlightened one um, is unlikely to be a single person. Um, instead, it is more likely to be a Sangha, a community of people practicing mindfulness together. Because that's the work that we're doing collectively right now, right? That's the work that we're doing collectively is, is coming together and lifting each other up. I think the days of the almighty guru and singular spiritual teacher that we're all supposed to, um, you know, bow down before are passing. There is a guru within you, right? Guru translates to that which brings us from darkness to light. Thanks, Blue Cube. How are you, my friend? That which brings us from darkness to light. That's all. And the truth is, is you can have a great teacher and they can assist you on that journey. But ultimately, every decision, every choice, every action or inaction ultimately comes down to you, right? You can tell yourself you want to get up early in the morning and you can set your alarm for it. If your alarm goes off and you don't get up, you're not getting up. You can ask your partner to help you by pushing you out of bed. Your alarm goes off, you don't get up, your partner pushes you out of bed. You can stay there on the floor and still not get up, right? When we talk about making changes or making choices in our life or, or doing things with our life, even, even this journey towards coming home to ourselves, towards samadhi or enlightenment or... Uh, wellness or just peace, whatever your intention is for your journey, right? To get there, you are the one who has to take those steps. And we can have support, we can have guidance, we can find wisdom outside of ourselves. But if that wisdom ultimately does not ring true within ourselves, 
then what use is it to us? Nice, Katie. <laughs> Thank you again, Blue Cube. Much appreciated. Yeah, yeah, Katie. It's 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 a big deal of what we do at Lamascar too. It's this it's this this concept of you are ultimately the one. No matter what resources and tools you use outside of yourself, you are ultimately the one who leads yourself from darkness to light. You are the one who has to take the steps on your path. And nobody else, I mean, people can physically force you to do stuff, but really, what are you learning and what are you gaining in that moment? Nothing. Not really. Right? Because the true strength comes from being the one to make the hard choices for yourself. I talk with my son often about bravery, right? Bravery doesn't mean not being scared. Bravery means doing the right thing even when you are scared. Bravery means doing what you have to do, what you know you need to do, even when you're absolutely terrified of it. And so much of our self-work looks like that. And, you know, you hear the term, so everybody's, everybody's fighting a battle that, you know, everybody's got their own battle within, right? Imagine how many times in your life it was so hard to do something, whether it's quit a habit, smoking, drinking, whether it's not saying that nasty thing that you want to say to somebody else, right? Sometimes just keeping your mouth shut is really, really difficult. And conversely, sometimes saying what you need to say is really, really, really terrifying. Have you sat there before? I know you guys have. Hey, Mama Bear, um, where you've got to say something. You know you have to say something. You know you're ready to say something. The words are on the tip of your fucking tongue. <laughs> and you're sitting there and you're sweating. And you're like, <sighs> if I can just, <sighs> okay, I'm going to do it. Okay, I'm going to say it. Okay, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm too terrified. I'm too terrified. Right? Nobody can make you do that. Nobody can fish those words out of your mouth and pull them out. And by doing so, they do you a disservice anyway. If I could reach down in your throat and grab those words for you that were difficult to say, I would do you a disservice because you don't get to take those steps for yourself and build that strength for yourself to make that choice and to do that thing for yourself. That's empowering, is to know that it's you who's got to walk yourself through it. It's you who takes those steps. Yes, it's also terrifying. Yes, it's also can feel like a burden. But our lives are what we make of them, right? So. How do we make those choices for ourselves? How do we discern in the moment what is the right choice for ourselves? Because that's the hard part, right? How do I know in the moment? How do I regain my locus of control to the extent that when something comes up in my life, that I don't just react to it, but instead I tap into my ability to respond, my response ability is just my ability to respond in the moment. Personally, I don't like the idea of other people having control of my emotions. I don't like the idea of situations in life steamrolling me and, you know, putting me in a bout of depression or a bout of anxiety. I don't like feeling like I'm a puppet to life and to the other people's energy around me. Yes, Katie, you give away your power when you do that. You give away your power. So for me, almost all of this has been to some degree to come into my own power. Yeah, take my power back, sure. But come into my own power in a way that is not so obtuse that it, I have to weaponize it to feel powerful, right? Is that really power if I have to weaponize my emotions, my power, my strength? I don't think so. I think it's cowardice to have to weaponize 
rather than having the strength and the courage to be present with experiences that may be painful. We'd be present with somebody throwing arrows at you. You guys know the, um, the story that I love so much <laughs> about, um, thank you so much, Nikki, about the monk sitting in the courtyard. The monk is sitting in the courtyard of a, you know, a city center, right? He's sitting there and there, there's the market going on, middle of the market. He's sitting there with his eyes half, o- half open in meditation, just observing and enjoying the bustle and the hustle and watching everything go about, just being himself, you know, enjoying his little meditation there, as we do, people watching, right? <laughs> and um, somebody in the market decides they're not happy with what he's doing. They don't agree with what he's doing. They think what he's doing is inappropriate for the marketplace and whatnot, and they're going to go tell him. So they go over and start telling him. And the monk doesn't really respond. The monk stays in meditation. And uh, this person becomes more and more upset because he's not getting a reaction, right? The monk isn't responding. And so the guy's like raising his voice now and he's in the guy monk's face and he's like, can't you hear me? Don't you understand what I'm saying? And the monk finally, (laughs) finally looks at the man and says, yes, I hear you. I simply choose not to accept the gifts that you are offering. And he returns to meditation. We do not have to accept the gifts that other people are offering us. We do not have to let them (laughs) hook into us and pull us around. It is not a law of nature that we are just victims of our experience and other people's and their energies and emotions and whatnot. And there's nothing we can do about it. I think it's one of the biggest misconceptions. One of the, it's, it's a, it's a, what's the word I like to say? It's a travesty. It's a travesty that we are taught that our locus of control is outside of ourselves, that we have to seek a guru to find wisdom that we have to find, you know, go to the doctor to figure out what's wrong with us, right? I've lived in my body my entire life, but it's the doctor who I meet for 15 minutes who's going to know absolutely everything about me and be able to diagnose the, the issue. Yeah, yeah. I respect a level of education and wisdom and skill. Absolutely. Can we work together as a team? Definitely. But I still retain that autonomy and that response ability. My ability to respond in the moment and my ability to set boundaries in the moment, my ability to request accountability in the moment, my ability to walk away and just discern that something is not for me. It's okay to discern that something is not for you. It doesn't mean it has to be a judgment. Okay, Katie, have a great day. Oh, Mama Bear, I'm so sorry, hun. Katie, yes, we will be back on on Thursday, um, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday morning. So we will be, take this mudra with you. Don't forget your mudra. Don't forget your t- turtle mudra. Hey, only love. Um, your kurma mudra, right? Make your little turtle base here. Drop the two middle fingers to the little I love you. Put the finger folded fingers together. Drop your pinky and your pointer. Connect your pointer and your thumb. Thumb to the base of your palm. Your Korma Mudra, the mudra for cultivating patience, cultivating the space, changing the quality of time in your in your experience to cultivate that sense of patience, that ability to respond to. And along with it comes that serenity, comes that harmony, comes that right cooperation and better communication and so many other things when we cultivate that sense of expansiveness within us that we call patience. So take it with you. Um, I will be live on Thursday morning. We will do a brief Thursday morning meditation um, for those of you who need the centering before 
dinnering, right? Um, yeah. We give away our power. We so often give away our power when we blame people for our experience, when we blame past experiences for our personality or our habits or our choices. We give away our power. Oh, well, somebody treated me like this, so that's how I am now. I remember I came from, uh, as you guys have heard before, I came from a really tumultuous household, right? There was a lot of abuse in the household and all that kind of good stuff. Um, trial by fire. And I remember meeting somebody um, in college, my first, you know, my early 20s or something. And we were sitting in a group together in class and she was talking about how horrible her life was when she was younger, not because she got physically hurt um, or, or even really like it basically boiled down to like she didn't get the things that she wanted. Her parents didn't buy her the things that she wanted um, and therefore were torturing her by not getting her a nice new car and all this stuff when she turned 16. And I remember her being like, it's just, that's just how I am now. I have this issue because my parents weren't, weren't, didn't take care of me and blah, 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 blah. And I was so taken aback. Having gone through what I had gone through and intentionally cultivated, still continuing to intentionally cultivate the ability to respond in the moment, to adjust who I am and how I react so that I can be really the person who I want to be. Not the person who this made me, not the person who this thinks I am, not the person who I am around so-and-so or so-and-so, no. But to be authentically myself in every moment from a place of compassion and love for self as well as for the other, right? Because that's what authenticity is. Authenticity is really an expression of divine love. Of, it's a divine expression. It is an expression of prana moving freely and openly through you. And that is a sense of love for self and for other. Hey, Fran, how are you? I was just taken aback by her acceptance of it. Yeah, this little thing happened. So now it's just who I am for the rest of my life. And I remember saying something like, why would you condemn yourself to that? Why would you condemn yourself to be this person who you verbal, verbally acknowledge is shitty? Like you recognize that these are really poor tools for communication and interpersonal relationships and all these other things. Uh, but you're like, yeah, well, get over it. Deal with it. This is who I am. So, like, okay, you're right. This is who you are because you've chosen that. And because there is a gift for each of us in the path that we choose. If you choose suffering for yourself, choose suffering. Fucking own it. Go do it. There is so much to learn. There are lessons. There are gifts in a path of suffering, right? There are lessons and there are gifts in a more peaceful path too. There are lessons and there are gifts in any path that we choose. And therefore, none of them are really wrong. It's just, what experience do you want to have? Honestly, I commend, I commend those people who come into life and they go, I'm going to choose suffering. I'm going to be a total asshole. I'm going to be the taint of the world and make sure that everybody knows how stinky I really am. Right? You know those people. And I just go, wow. What what a contract, what a soul contract, what, what a, what a, what gumption to come into this life and be like, I'm going to, I'm going to live in that personal hell for my own little deal. Sorry guys, I don't go live with people. I don't know. Feel free to send me a message about going live another time. Oh, Fran, it's never late. Timing is always as it needs to be. Right? So you're here just right on time. And of course, I'll always give you the mudra anyway, right? Um, Fran, so do, do you want the mudra for the week? I don't know if you caught it. 
Our mudra for the week is called the Kurma, Kurma mudra, K-U-R-M-A. Um, Kurma translates to tortoise or turtle. Um, and this mudra cultivates patience. Imagine the way that, right, the turtle is one of the longest living creatures that we have on the planet. Um, turtles breathing and heart rate are quite slow indeed. They live, um, when they need to rest, when they need to protect themselves, when they need to pause, right? They go into their shell and they take the time that they need. I feel like more than any other creature, the tortoise probably has the best ability, the best response ability because of the quality of time that they experience. And we've talked before in meditation about how when we practice mindfulness, when we practice meditation, we can change the quality of time that we experience, right? We can actually change the way that we experience time. I wonder, I wonder how tortoises experience time. Because if we can, if I can change my experience of time simply through meditation, what would it be like to cultivate that kind of patience with life itself in every single moment? So to experience that, to connect to that energy, we practice our Kurma Mudra. So the Kurma Mudra is done like so. Left hand, palm up, tuck in your Last three fingers, so your pointer, your ring, and your pinky. Tuck them all into your palm, leaving your pointer, excuse me, your yeah, middle ring and pinky, I apologize. Leaving your pointer extended and your thumb extended. So you get a little L shape, right? With your palm facing up. Hey, cougar queen. And then your right hand goes into the little I love you symbol by dropping those two middle fingers, your middle and your ring finger. And then you place the folded fingers together right? Making your little turtle in the middle. And then we're going to make a shell. So you connect your pinky and pointer, pointer and thumb, thumb and the base of your palm where your wrist and your palm meet together. So you create that shell. And I really love this mudra because it's really visual. Like I, I the, this, the experience that I have when I do this mudra is very much like this visual of all of this expansive space around, that is the shell around the turtle. It's almost as if I get a little bit smaller and my space gets a little bit bigger. So in this way, we cultivate that expansiveness within. The expansiveness that gives us, changes our quality of time so that we can be more responsible. We can be more able to respond in the moment and cultivate a, the sense of patience that is needed for things like harmony and connection and better communication and better relationships with people we may not always get along with. So that's why we're doing this mudra this week, the Kodma mudra, the turtle tortoise mudra. We make that shell with our fingers and we tuck that little turtle inside. So when you do this mudra, hold it down by the lower chakras. It gets a little bit harder to hold it at your heart. You want to hold it by your lower chakras. Um, the sacral chakra is your center for nurturing. So it feels very natural to hold it in front of your sacral chakra. Um, if you want to use this chakra to balance your solar plexus energy, which is your will, um, and, uh, sometimes a very big forceful energy from some of us, um, you can hold this Kurma Mudra in front of your solar plexus, and that will assist you in tempering the energy, the fire from your solar plexus. So if you've got one of those moments where you're sitting there with family this week and somebody says that triggering thing and you're like, oh no, she didn't, but you're trying to be good and you just know that you don't need to cause that chaos because mom is going to be real mad if you say some shit and try to start a fight. Nope. Just put your turtle right here in front of your solar plexus and invite. Well, sorry, I'm holding it here and I already just felt it roll around my belly. Invite that expansiveness. Invite that soothing, like a slow, steady exhale.
literally my entire house just got quiet. So when you sit with this mudra, I encourage you to take long, slow, steady breaths to assist in cultivating this energy. Long, slow, steady breaths in and out at the nose, elongating the breath like the tortoise, following the inhale all the way to the top. Thank you, Jason. You guys are just spoiling, spoiling me with the llamas this morning. And following that exhale all the way to the bottom. This is such a powerful mudra. And for those of you who, you know, I have animal medicine cards. I like I like connecting to animals. I feel like they're easy to understand and easy to connect to, right? Um, our human helpers. Um, we have a symbiotic relationship with them. So this one I really like because it is specific to the turtle and I can meditate with that energy. I can meditate with the turtle itself, herself, and all that comes with it and asking for guidance and support from her as well, right? Or him, whichever works for you. So I really like this mudra. I don't want to put it down now. See what you did? You got me stuck in a mudra. High tapping point. I'm stuck in a mudra <laughs> because it's a really nice mudra. <laughs> and it happens to the best of us. I know you get stuck tapping sometimes because I got I've gotten stuck tapping sometimes. You know, you know. <laughs> uh. Thank you, Hawk. Some uh, humility or respect would couldn't hurt, you know. This is a what we call Kaya Yoga space. Kaya stands for come as you are. C A Y A Yoga. Yoga as a lifestyle, as a philosophy, as the uh, teachings that bring us into balance with our inner and outer selves. So. I always invite you guys to this space um, with a sense of curiosity and willingness, right? You may not always a agree with what you find here. You may not. In fact, I, I encourage folks who don't agree with what they find here to engage in conversation and hang out for a little bit with that sense of curiosity and willingness to hear and to learn and to grow. It offers us an opportunity to expand our awareness, to deepen our understanding of ourselves and the other, but ultimately ourselves, because we're ego beings. We're stuck in this subjective, subjective experience simulation or whatever you want to call it. But ultimately, I can't get outside of my subjective experience. Neither can you. And I think that's by design. Because when I'm stuck in my subjective experience, and you are too, it means I can never completely know everything about you. I can never be certain of all the things about you. And therefore, my innate human curiosity is peaked for lifetimes. Reality is a multifaceted gym. And each of us are the facets on that gym. When we make a genuine attempt to stand in somebody else's place, look through their facet of the world, then we give ourselves such a powerful opportunity to see something new and to understand our reality better. You guys know my other favorite, <laughs> my other favorite story about the the blind men and the elephant yeah <laughs> there you go cougar queen <laughs> yes jason you've gone into hermit mode to polish your gem 
there are times where it's so important to do this. So I actually, um, I talk about my temple, right? I closed the doors to my temple last year for the same reason, to polish the floors, to wash the walls, to repaint and fix tile and to rebuild the crumbling pieces. And, you know, there are times where it's really, really important for us. It's a, hey, Brie, it's a, um, it's maintenance. We brush our teeth. We wash our bodies. We feed our bodies. But we don't always take care of our temple, our inner temple, beyond the mechanical, habitual, oh, I got to brush my teeth. Oh, I got to eat some food. I'm just going to stuff food in my face, right? I'm not going to take care of my inner quality of space, right? We were talking earlier about our locus of control being outside of it ourselves, right? And, ever, and being a puppet to whatever happens in our life. That happens when we don't spend time in our inner temple. When we don't find the captain of our pirate ship, when we don't find the, I don't know, who was it in my temple? I guess the inner guru, right? The inner guru, that divine light, that divine spark that ultimately leads you back home to yourself. Tony, how are you? Thank you, friend. Yes, we aren't even aware of some of the dirt we pick up along the way. So yes, I like that you said that. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, especially for those of us who like to be of service in any way, right? There is a lot of us who allow people into our inner temple, into our inner space. And when we allow somebody else's energy to affect our inner space, we're letting their, them rummage through our temple. We've got the doors wide open, the windows right at wide open. You know, the storm is blowing through, throwing papers and everything everywhere. You've got a riot over here. You've got, you know, like, <sighs> when was the last time you checked on your temple? I love you too, Emily. It is so, <sighs> it is difficult to justify self-care when we believe that our value is in our productivity, is in what we do for others. The paradox is that when we care for ourselves first, take care of our temple, fill our cup, make sure we are warm and clothed and fed, then the quality of what we give is exponentially greater because it's not coming from an empty cup. And for those of us who like to be of service, it's really hard to do that because we've gotten the message wired into our physiology that says, I have to do this for them. I have to be there for them. It's compelling, right? It's compelling to put myself aside so that I could be there for someone else. And there's many, 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 many times where we can absolutely do that. And it's okay to be there for people. I'm not saying by any means ditch everybody that you're taken care of, right? Or, or just be totally selfish. But there's a difference between selfish and self-centered. And this is a game of semantics, so roll with me here for a second. Self-centered means that I have cultivated a sense of balance within myself. I have cultivated that seat of awareness within me, my inner guru, and I operate from that place. I take care of that so that I can operate from that place so that the wisdom of my higher self can speak through me clearly, right? Can move me through life wisely. <laughs> but when I am selfish, I'm going to take care of myself above everybody else, regardless 
if it hurts anyone else. Self-centered includes the awareness of other. Self-centered includes our love for self and other, a lot like authenticity, right? It is a divine expression of our interconnectedness when we are self-centered. I recognize that I have value and my need for self-care for care is equal to yours. And so hopefully we meet each other in that place of I've taken care of myself as best I could and you took care of yourself as best you could today. And then we meet in the middle and I bring the tea and you bring the cookies and we take care of each other even further. And then when we take care of each other, thanks Tony, when we take care of each other, it is a joy. That's gonna make me cry. It is a joy to show up and share space. But when we deny ourselves that basic sense of care and we show up to tea totally naked and with no tea, (laughs) it changes the experience. It changes the quality of the exchange for the self as well as for the other person. You've met those people, you know those people, you probably have those people in your life who show up to your door completely naked, who who show up to tea completely naked and with no tea. And you were like, ah, friend, I thought we were meeting here for tea. I brought the cookies. Okay, no, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll get the tea too. Okay, here's the cookies, there you go. Um, Here's the tea, there you go. Oh, my honey, you need a shirt too. Well, hold on, let me take my shirt off and, and give you that too. Now, at least I've got a pair of pants and you've got a shirt, we're halfway there. Totally different experience. Let's remember to hold space in our lives for those people who are struggling for self-care, still learning self-care, still cultivating that sense of self-love enough to give themselves self-care. Let's hold space for those people. And make sure that you're leaving space for people, if you don't already have them in in your life, who show up having taken care of themselves too. We don't want to surround ourselves only with I'm really big on semantics, so sometimes I pause to choose my words wisely, sorry. I don't have the words for it right now. I have stories playing in my head. I have images playing in my head. I have, I have two people coming together, wanting to spend their lives together, right? Let's, let's friendship or romance or whatever it is. Let's come together. But if I come together from my castle over here and you have your castle over there, and we take care of our shit and we meet in the middle. We bring, we bring, I'll save that. I'm going to save that because there's like a story in there somewhere. And I think I might just have to write that down to distill what the message was in there. (laughs) I'm a visual person. And a lot of times I get, you know, that stuff through imagery. Um, But it's also in storytelling that I have found some of the deepest lessons for myself. Um, I am going to go here in just a little bit, but. I wanted to remind you guys about internal family systems. If, uh, thank you, Fran. (laughs) Um, But speaking on self-love, one of the tools that has been exponentially helpful to me is a combination of mindfulness and a process that is called internal family systems. Um, Internal family systems is the idea that within us all, we have these different facets of self, yes? The way that I show up to dinner with my family versus the way that I show up out to drinks with my friends are are different. The way that I show up in private with my romantic partner versus the way that I show up uh, at my job, right? These are different facets of myself. Internal family systems says that these are, that we can turn each of these into a character, kind of like a story. Hey, Jenny, um, 
where we play a thought game with our internal family. And I've been working with this for years. For me, my internal family, the setting is a pirate ship. I am a pirate. And there is a whole crew in here. Self-love is the process of meeting each facet of yourself, cultivating a relationship with that facet of yourself so that you can cultivate inner harmony with all parts of self. Mindfulness is a massively helpful tool to this end. <laughs> if it wasn't for mindfulness, I don't think I would have gotten as deep into inter internal family systems as I did. I've written stories about a bunch of my characters, but it was actually in the practices of meditation. It was in the practices of sitting down to have a conversation in my own mind with these parts of myself, to negotiate with these parts of myself, finding the awareness and the patience with myself in the moment when I see the, you know, what I would say, the rearing the ugly head, right? My anger over here, this character who's my defender, who's big and strong and loud and holds boundaries firm. When that person comes up, when that character comes up over like a tiny little thing that's not necessary, right? you know that big reaction, you're like, ah, I feel it coming. I can feel it rising up in me. What do I do? Mindfulness allows us to cultivate the sense of awareness in the moment to pause, to see that happening, to make a negotiation, but to negotiate with the parts of ourselves We've got to have mutual respect and love too. Oh, Jason. Welcome, my friend. Jason just, just subscribed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So guys, FYI, um, when you subscribe, again, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Deborah. I am one of the creatrix llamas at llamascar.com. We're an online mindfulness community. Um, and when you subscribe, we have various levels of membership. When you subscribe here, you get a discount link for a discounted membership to Lamascar. You also get the link for our energy exchange membership. Um, and I'm still learning how the TikTok subscription stuff works. So if you don't get that, please send me a message and I will send those things to you. Um, if you'd like to join Lamascar, again, you can either subscribe here, you can go directly to Lamascar, or if you'd like to work directly with me, either through Lamascar or in private coaching, you can go to my website at movewithchange.com. Those are all in the bio. If you have any questions about that, um, feel free to just send me a message. It can be the easiest way to do it and just go, hi, I was in the live and I want to know all the things. <laughs> um, so... Finding that awareness in the moment to respond to, but, but again, if I'm going to negotiate successfully with this part of myself, especially that anger one, who's really loud and forceful, I have to have a trusting, respectful relationship with that part of myself, right? How do I cultivate that trusting, respectful relationship with that part of myself? By, by, so learning self-love, by practicing self-love, by practicing self-exploration, by going into my temple and taking the time to sit face to face with this part of myself and say, bro, why are you so pissed? What, why do you need to scream about this little tiny thing? I love you. I hear you. I see you. So many times with parts of ourselves, we want to say, I hate you. I don't want you here. Go away. You're fucking shit up. Go away. I have that conversation with parts of myself still. And <laughs> it doesn't make for a good relationship. <laughs> it does not make for a good um, exchange. And that part of me, when it comes up, I struggle to manage myself when that trigger is poked because I don't have that relationship with myself. And again, in the wise words of my mama, <laughs> she said, if you create an enemy of yourself, of any part of yourself, it is a battle you will, it is a war that you will wage your entire life. It is a battle you will never win. 
Is that the life you want to live? She asked. Is that the life you want to live? Or do you want to look at yourself and try to be... Try that radical acceptance. Try that radical self-love. Try that. Try. Try it. Who cares? Today is today, right? Tomorrow you can do whatever you want. You can go back to your shitty self-talk if you want to tomorrow. But today, just today, try to offer yourself radical love and compassion. When that anger and frustration, you're sitting there doing your dishes, right? And somebody comes in and puts another dish in the sink. And for no fucking reason, you just, you want to blow up. You want to yell. You want to scream. You want to whatever. That trigger happens. I invite you to take a chance today. I invite you to take a chance. And just do something differently. If your normal thing is to raise your voice and yell about the thing that made you frustrated, then stomp your feet. Be silly. Jump up and down. Go grab a pillow and be like, blah, 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 blah. or take some deep breaths. Right? There's so many things. I really love cultivating play, using play as a way to cultivate mindfulness in the moment, as a way to repair my relationship with myself because it's so simple and so <sighs> profoundly effective. When we shift from anger to playful, it changes our mood. It changes the energy in the room. It changes like if we, our energy does affect each other, right? And you can either make a stink because you're having a pissy moment and you got triggered because of something that happened decades ago and your body is still wired that way, but it has nothing to do with right now. And every time you do that, it causes discord between you and your family or your partner or whoever, or whatever or your boss, or whatever. Take a chance today. Just do that thing differently. Pick one thing, tiny little thing, and do it differently. I don't care how you do it differently. Just do it differently. Maybe you don't, again, maybe you don't yell. Maybe you just really slowly and deeply say, you know how frustrating it is when I'm in the middle of dishes. <laughs> Life is not so serious as our bodies and our brains sometimes tell us it is. Things are not so dangerous as sometimes our body and our brains tell us it is, tell us they are. So cultivate, let's cultivate some patience this week with ourselves and with each other. Let's be like turtle. Move slow and steady and rest when you need it. And when somebody comes at you with a bunch of gifts that you have no interest in, yeah, I don't wear pink sweaters that are way too small for me. Sorry, thanks, friend. Just pretend it's that. It's nothing more important than a pink sweater you don't want that doesn't fit you anyway. Somebody comes at you with their shitty opinion about something, their judgmental co side comment, right? Whatever that stuff that happens sometimes this week for people. When that stuff comes up, look at it like a pair of shoes that just aren't your size. No, thank you. I love you guys so much. I know that this week is not always the best for people. So feel free to reach out. Feel free to send me a message. Make a video. Tag me. If you need some encouragement, if you need a tool, if you need a reminder, hell, if you've got a specific situation and you're like, my grandma just showed up and she just did this and this and this and this. And I don't know what's going to happen. And all this, all this is going to explode. Please help, llama. <laughs> I am on call this week. Usually we have coaching by donation. Um, thank you, guys. We have coaching by donation on Thursday afternoons. But because this Thursday is a holiday and I will probably be out mushroom hunting, um, I am putting myself kind of on call. So if you guys need anything... Um, I wonder if I could open the coaching by donation just for this week. Go to movewithchange.com. 
I'm going to try to open up my coaching package as a coaching by donation thing just for this week. So if you guys need anything, let me know. Billy, Kitty is outside. That's Starling Kitty. The one that I found is like a teeny tiny kitten and has pretty much attached to me and is its mama. So it's sitting out there being like, Mom, it's cold. Please let me in. Just being a kitty. Yes, mushroom hunting. I promise to make lots of videos. Um, and if I have the capacity to go live, I will totally go live and you guys can help me find some mushrooms. We're gonna go to the coast. I think that's what we're gonna do for the entire Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving, yeah, yeah. So I love you guys so much. If you need anything this week, please reach out. I will go to my website and try to create a coaching by donation based on my coaching schedule for the week. I think I can do that pretty relatively easily. So if you need that, reach out. You can go to the website or you can also just send me a message and say, hey, can I jump in on coaching by donation? Those are 10 to 15 minute sessions, coaching by donation. And you guys can go through my website to do that. But if you have any questions, want to send me a message. Also, if you want to join the Sangha, we also have a great support group in the Sangha. We have group coaching on Thursday in the Sangha as well. Um, you can join directly at lamascar.com or you can go to Move With Change if you want to join the Sangha through me and work directly with me. Um, otherwise, Subscribe here on TikTok and you get a discounted membership to the Sangha and you get the link for the energy exchange membership too, in case the dollar sign is something that keeps you out of the Sangha. So, all right, my friends, I love you. I'm going to go have my breakfast. I'm going to go let that poor sad little kitty inside and probably throw the, throw the fris Frisbee for my dog. All right. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Don't forget your korma mudra. Da -da. Be like turtle. Breathe slow and steady, my friends. Iris, you just don't about don't trust DMs on online sites anymore. I know it's chaos out here. Um, so same thing, as I was saying earlier, make a video, tag me in the video, talk directly to me. Don't send me a message if that doesn't work, right? Because it is, it gets kind of messy over there. If you want to communicate, if you need some support, reach out. Um, and like I said, I will set up the coaching by donation as best I can um, on the website. So if you guys need anything, you're not alone. Okay. I love you so much. And I will see you Thursday morning for Bhakti Bites again. Love you.